Hey guys, how's it going? And I am back. I know it's been literally two weeks since my previous video, and that is for a good reason. Let me hit F3 for you. And notice anything different? Anything? Maybe we look over here? Maybe we look up here? Yeah, so uh, in case you're wondering, I am, hopefully this doesn't reveal too much, on a new desktop with no backgrounds that are fancy or cool anymore. Rip. Um, and, uh, yeah, so this is a whole new computer, new monitor, new entire thing. I put it together. It took me about a day. I did it last Wednesday. That's why I didn't make a video last Wednesday. And I was just kind of feeling like, eh, I'll post a video when, when, uh, the next Wednesday comes around just to keep the schedule alive. Anyways. So what we're here for today is, uh, snowballs. When they land, you see what, uh, where they landed and uh, it's pretty much flawless there is some cases where it's not perfect but it'll probably be close enough from a selector standpoint um but yeah there is some nuances so if i stand here like this and i go at a weird angle i think uh, uh, i don't know if i can trigger it but there sometimes it would put this stone yeah sometimes it puts the stone one away uh and that just has to do with uh, entity flight lag and uh, sometimes the you'll you'll see what I mean uh, but yeah so this is a pretty much flawless it's multiplayer friendly if two people are throwing snowballs at the same time it will still work just fine it remembers who threw the snowball so if the snowball did hit something then it would it would know who hit it and uh, it would maintain like information like that uh yeah so we get into it it's very few commands it's not that bad and the actual data pack to do this is in the description i'll show you how to if you just want to use the data pack okay because i give you guys my stuff because i'm not greedy now let's see we got snowball and then we do sp ball 1b and if you do sp ball 1b then that means it's going to track the snowball and we hit enter and now that snowball is tracked anything that doesn't have that tag the snowball will not be tracked and we can go into here, into this pack that I've made, that's pretty small, and we can indicate what happens when it lands. So right now it's uh, setting a block to stone. The kill address is pretty much, is kind of important because, uh, yeah, or else it'll spam stuff. Uh, so this will set the block to stone. Instead, we could uh, do effect to whoever's there. We could do particle. We could do as many things as we want because this is a data pack, a function. Sorry about that, guys. I had to, uh, I'm still working on getting in here. I don't have syntax highlighting for MC stuff yet. Uh, and I had to hide the uh, path. I had to do a limited path show because it was showing the entire path, which I was not, not really wanting. Okay, so the functions are pretty simple. So I'll get into how it works. But yeah, so if you just want to use this, you can download it change what you want in the landed, keep the kill at S, and uh, give the tag of the snowball, and you can add any extra information you want. And I have a really cool application of this that I'll make a video on later. Uh, so this is pretty simple. We're gonna go over all the commands. There isn't too many. So we're going to go to any snowball that is not tagged, but has this MBT, which is probably the most painful or slash uh, least efficient command there is, but that's, I mean, it's the only way to do it. Uh, then we have to run found ball. So this means this found ball is played to anything that is just found when it first is thrown. So when it first is thrown, it was just found. We spawn a new snowball with the tag and a passenger that is an area effect cloud. Then we copy the old snowball's owner tag to the new snowball, the old snowball's motion tag to the new snowball, and then we remove the init so that we know we set up this snowball and we kill the old snowball. So what this does is it spawns a new snowball that has a passenger because snowballs, if you have a snowball and there's a passenger, when the snowball hits the wall or hits something, the passenger will fall off right there, right? So we, so the passenger is really what is showing us where it landed, okay? And the passenger is an area effect cloud, so it is the probably the fastest, and the least, the most efficient entity, and it's invisible. Okay, so then to any area effect cloud that is the special one, that does not pass this predicate check, then play landed. So we go to SP, we go to predicates, and we go to is riding snowball. This checks if you're on a vehicle that is a snowball with this tag. 
Okay, so that makes sense. So if you are not on the vehicle, then you landed. Perfect. And then landed does kill out as set block stone. That's easy. Very easy. There is one additional thing. And also init needs this. So this is an additional thing. Um, so if you just did this, let me show you what happens if I don't have these other commands. Hey, did you see that? <laughs> did you notice? Did you notice the issue? Look at this. That's that's not good. We can't see the snowball flying. Uh, there's a reason for this. It's a efficiency thing um, or something. Uh, but essentially, if you sum, summon an entity like a snowball or an arrow and you update the game's code, I mean the motion, then it will not update what the motion looks visually. So this is what VizFix is for. So VizFix is a scoreboard that is a fake player and we are toggling it from negative one to positive one by multiplying it by negative one. And for every snowball, VizFix, if the value is negative one, we set the error to zero. If the value is one, we set the error to one. Don't ask me why this works. This is just something that uh, Der Disco Hound showed, told me about. But if you toggle the error value, whether it's in air from zero to one, every other tick. So this ticket zero, that ticket's one, this ticket zero, that ticket's one, then it fixes it. And I don't know how many times you have to do it. Maybe it would fix it if we just did it like three times, but it's probably just fine doing this, just constantly doing it. Uh, but yeah, so there we go. So that's that's it. That's the whole system. The commands are not very complicated. They're pretty simple. Anyways, I hope that was useful to you guys. Maybe you're going to use this in your own projects or something. I can think of a couple ideas for it. Uh, if you thought this was useful, leave a like. Let me know what you want to see next. Maybe subscribe. I think only 1% of it. No, I'm just kidding. There's like 18%. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next one. Peace.